Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Um, so today uh, we are here discussing a very exciting topic, how first principles thinking, how first principles thinking <laughs> drives di digital business innovation. Um, my name is Jacob Smith. Um, I am the community director for uh, Altimetric Collider. I uh, joined by my esteemed right hand, uh, Ryan Robinson, who's somewhere on your screen. Wave to people, Ryan. Hello, beautiful, everyone. Beautiful. And we are here representing uh, Collider, which is a premier hub for digital business professionals. So effectively, what we do is we bring together uh, bright technology minds uh, across disciplines and sectors and geographies effectively to share techniques for driving growth and profitability for digital first businesses without disrupting processes, all the things that you know and love related to digital business, digital transformation, all those good things. Um, we'll drop some links in the chat for how you can stay connected with us. But this program is not about me. It's very much about first principles thinking. So we want to go ahead and, and kick that off. Um, and I'm very excited to, to hand over the mic uh, to my friend um, and frequent collaborator, Kurt Hinckley, who is a seasoned tech startup and just tech business uh, veteran. Um, he started numerous businesses um, in the EV battery space, uh, as well as more generally um, working on some really exciting things around ethical investing. Um, and some other things. He can kind of go into a bit more depth of, of what he feels is, is relevant from his long and amazing resume. Uh, and today we are talking about first principles thinking. So in the simplest terms, uh, it's basically how do you boil down, uh, how do you break down complex problems into their component parts and then build up from there in order to drive innovation? Um, Kurt can explain this a lot uh, better than me, but uh, yeah, I'm very excited to hear what uh, we're going to be getting into today. The course of uh, how this is going to go, we're basically, Kurt's going to take over in just a moment. We're going to break down the topic and, and, and discuss kind of uh, where he's coming at it from and, and get everyone's brains, uh, you know, cranking in that direction. And then we're going to open it up for, for a bit of discussion um, so that we can hear from everyone in terms of how you might apply this to what you're working on, um, any questions you might have for Kurt. Etc. He's an expert in this domain, and we're very excited to have him. So, without further ado, I hand it over to Kurt. Take it away. Wow! Thank you. Always great to hear you explain me and give such great accolades and welcome everybody. Um, and uh, when, when uh, Ryan and Jacob asked me to talk about um, our first principles, it's it's really the thing that's nearest and dearest to my heart because it it applies to to every piece of my life, both uh, business, uh, you know, in, in, in personal relationships and in, in how I exercise. I mean, it's, and so, you know, it's, it, it's really meaningful to me. And, and I think it, that's part of this too. And kind of what I call the baby first principles is what are we trying to accomplish? And, and, and so I'm going to start there because, because what we're trying to accomplish the way this is, is for tonight is, um, in digi digital business innovation. So how does it apply to that? So I could start out with first principles, but how does it really apply to that? And, and I pulled up this, this, this article that said 70% of digital transformation um, projects um, do not achieve their goals. And so that's in, in a, uh, maybe in 2017, 2018, there was $1.3 trillion spent, which meant that $90 billion of it was wasted. Um, because it, it, the digital transformation, and I want to talk about why that is. So it's like, well, well, everybody has their ideas of the people, the processes, the the money, the way it's rolled out, and you know, it really comes down to a big piece of what first principles is. So the way most pros, uh, programs and and projects are rolled out is, what do we know? What do we always do? Who are the people in the room on the bus, whatever it might be, and how are we going to take that? put it in a different way, get the same people, the same systems to do something incrementally better. And so that makes sense. I mean, it's how we get up in the morning and go to work. It's how it's a very lawyer type thing where precedents are set and we can build systems on what we already know. That's called reasoning by analogy. And it, it's generally how the vast majority of people uh, operate in their lives. And, and again, it makes sense. I mean, if I put my my pants on yesterday that I should put them on today and the sin that I'll have pants on, right? Whatever the case is. I mean, however you look at your life, you're, that's called reasoning by analogy. And it makes sense, incremental improvements. 
But when you hear the word transformation, especially as it goes to digital transformation is what this is about, then we have to look at that differently. And you know, one of the, um, there was an article from McKinsey and Company, um, and, and just brilliant, I'll start with a quote from, from uh, Ari uh, Leberikian. Uh, business building used to be viewed as an experiment, an innovation off to the side. Now it's become a necessity for incumbents, a differentiating capability needed for long-term success. And, and so the reason I bring that up is that companies, in, in the rest of the article, talks about if a company wants to continue to become part of this transformation, then they need to actually start up something separate. And something like 20 to 30% of that group can be from the incumbent core group of the company. But the rest of the people need to be from, have the startup mindset, don't know what they're talking about or as it relates to the core company. I mean, something that, that just breaks the mold because the people in the core company are going to reason by analogy. They're, they've been taught to incrementally improve everything. They've been rewarded financially on incrementally improving everything, driving out variation, uh, th that sort of thing. So um, this, this really ties into that's how it's done. I think if we understand deeply how it's done right now and why that doesn't always work. It does work sometimes. It's not that it doesn't always work, but uh, it often will when we're, when we're trying to transform something, trying to get something new out there. We have to go to a different method. And, and that method, it, it comes out of physics and in math, and I'm a mathematician, but I still didn't know this very well, unfortunately. So when I, when I started working with um, in 2012 with a company where we, we built it from the kind of from the ground up really um, in, in terms of supplying a lot of components to Tesla Motors. I got to meet Elon Musk. I'm sure he does not remind or remember me, <laughs> but that's okay. And I, I thought, well, how is he doing this? And I started hearing about first principles and he talks a lot about that, about first principles and, and, and what it means. So um, I dove into it at that point and started to go, oh, okay. So there's reasoning by analogy, which is what I just said. And then there's first principles. We're going to take like SpaceX as he did and said, what are all the raw components that, that go into it? The metals that go into a rocket. And if we poured them out on the floor, just the raw material, it would be 2% of the cost of the entire rocket. So then if we didn't cost anything else to build that rocket, it would only be 2% for that rocket. So if we can look at different ways to put those raw materials together versus always doing it the way everybody's always done, we can reduce the cost by half or more. And he, he did that. That's, that's really the, the genesis of how SpaceX became so, what's, we're able to make it into a financially viable company. And he did the same thing with Tesla. He talks a lot about that in, in terms of, um, if, if, if you want to read, we'll talk a little bit about it tonight. Um, it's called the, uh, uh, the Cook and the Chef, right? So it's, uh, it's by um, Tim Urban, who does a blog on the Wait But Why, if you've not heard of him before. Uh, he did a blog, he met with Elon a few times and talked about why was he able to do what he's doing? And, and it really turned into, it turned into a huge blog. It's really actually funny to read. And, and it's maybe 50 pages long if you print it off. And uh, so that, he talks about that first principle. So, so first principles really is about breaking things down to their, their basic raw material and then building it back up to try to get where you want to be. Um, it's kind of like, I'll, I'll take, um, if we take some, one of the biggest problems in the world that's, it, it is, is global hunger. If we wanted to solve global hunger and we were all, we can all agree that we want to solve that. And then we can pull that back and say, what does that look like in terms of what kind of food would people have sitting in front of them? And, and then we, we can agree on lots of steps all the way back to pretty much now, there's a little bridge between now and, and, and what we can get to. We all agree that it's possible back to a certain point. And this bridge is the most difficult part. And I take that way of explaining it from Elon. He says, I'll, I'll get you to a little bridge, but then it's your job to solve it. And then he would just fire them if they couldn't solve it. <laughs> so he said, he said, I could solve it, but I don't have time to do that. So you need to solve that. And that's how he got people to, to really buy into the first principles. And then you look at the EV, EV industry, you look at um, um, digital business innovation. If you think about the, how that applies, if we're looking at what do we want to become? Where do you want to go? What do you want it to look like, feel like? Then if you look, then look around the room and you're looking at the people and the systems, then it, it's likely to have a lot more struggle, a lot more cost, a lot more time put into it, and then a higher likelihood of failing, right? So 
it, it's how do you start with, and I use the baby, I call them baby first principles, uh, just as what are we trying to accomplish? But it, it really comes from the first principles. If we know what we're trying to accomplish, then we can start to look at, at, at where we are. So um, that is, that's what it is. And, and it's only unique because it comes from a particular field of science, of physics and math. Um, it's unique in the sense that it um, isn't used very much, right? It's been around for a long time. And it's like, so well, so I'd love some questions tonight on how could you use this? Because it's not just for business. It's for your personal relationships. It's for um, it's again, how you relate to yourself. It's how it, you, you can apply to it at any part, any spot in your life. And, and it, once you know that and see the changes it can make, and see how you can adjust to the way that the world changes on a weekly, daily basis, then it really opens up a lot of possibilities. So that's that's a really neat way to um, to kind of look at changing. Where, where do you want to go? What are you trying to accomplish in any aspect of your life or at work? And so I just yeah start with that and and kind of maybe that's the broader scope of of, of what I wanted to start with, and then. Kind of see from here where, where some of the questions are, because as, as Jacob and Ryan know, this topic, when we get into it and start talking about it, it goes all over the place. We've talked about it uh, in respect to, uh, to Altimetric and to Collider, to uh, just every piece of, of uh, it's kind of one of those topics you can sit around and drink coffee and go on for hours. And just because it, it, it winds back on itself. So you end up having some great questions that are just almost paradoxical really and it's it's super fun and if nothing else i just enjoy that part um so yeah i like so that's my first and throw that out there and um kind of i could talk for a long time but i want to get some ideas of where we could, where you'd like to take this because there are again other areas in business different types of business personal life and and i i like the idea of a talking about how we can apply it to each one of those sections or whatever you think might be a good idea. And especially on a startup like NAV systems, um, that's going to be something you'll want to, uh, you probably have, you've, you've ingrained that in your DNA so that it, it isn't just a, a rifle shot in one direction. So anyway, that's my opening commentary. Yeah. Curious if anyone has any, uh, any thoughts that immediately come to mind or any, or any questions for, for Kirk to kick things off? Any brave souls that want to uh, either mm -hmm. unmute or post in the chat? Yeah. I was just curious, like how you uh, like, uh, make adjustments. So th this is Greg here. Um, yeah, like how, how you make adjustments here, like conventional thinking and then, like transition away like, in, into first principles thinking, like, you know, on, like a, I guess on an everyday basis, or um, it seems like it, you know, it's like something that would be like a slow process, right? Like slow and, and conscious process, I guess, very intentional. <clears throat> it, it, it is, yeah, you know, it's, 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 an, it's again, one of those questions. It's a great question because it, it, it on one hand, is extremely intentional. I mean, what are you trying to accomplish? You go out there and say, this is what, whatever it is that you're looking for. But then the, uh, almost the, <laughs> I will say the unintentional part is by doing that, you free up the ability to, to really grab on to all of the changes that occur between now and where you're going. Right, so you it, it in that sense, it's not it's kind of releasing the intentionality, if you will, because you're more able to understand that all of these variables can happen, but you know so far out there where you're going, and you brought it back to now, that it it, it actually opens up um, a lot more possibility on how you get there, because what what happens is is we say, okay, I'm going to lose 20 pounds, so this is what I know how to do, how I've worked out in the past, who I know, this is what I'm going to do. And it's what, or I've, you know, in terms of what I eat or whatever it might be. And so we follow that same path, which really limits the way we might look at something. And so it, it that's actually a more arduous path than this one, which says, I'm, I already know where I'm going. And, and, and as long as I'm getting there, as long as then you open up to all these ideas of what it might look like, you bring all those back. I mean, what are the get a personal trainer or, or, you know, get, get some sort of software, an app, or, you know, you look at all the pieces of the puzzle that get us back to where you are now, and then you engage with that. And, and so the first part is extremely intentional, you know, knowing, having a vision, if you will, um, of where you want to go and whatever that might look like. Um, and so it, it, it takes, it, it's very fast moving in the first part when you bring that up, 
but it does. Anytime we change and we, we, we change habits, then it's going to take a little bit um, you know, to, to move that. But I go back to because there's so many options and you know where you're, you have such a better idea of that vision of where you're going. Um, you, the, you, because of those options, you, you almost, you get there faster, if you will. You don't, you don't get stuck in the, um, like in the day-to-day of, 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 in the history of bringing everything along. I mean, it's part of like the story what I, what I was saying about the business side. Um, when there's businesses, they don't want people to come out of the core business too much because that's just the way they think. Everything mm-hmm. they built is, is based on that. So, but it's a, it's, it's a great question of, of, I hope I answered it. Uh, and yeah, it's yeah, one you know of the that. parts about this topic. You kind of, <laughs> you kind of go around yeah. and around in circles a little bit, mm-hmm. but in, I think a really fun way, right? It, yeah. um, does that answer a little bit? Yeah, that, that, yeah, yeah, that, that does, yeah. Yeah, yeah um, it's, it's exciting. I mean, it, it really is an exciting way to look at things. Um, and so I obviously recommend it highly. It has a cautionary tale, I'll tell you in a little bit, but yeah, mm-hmm. it's really cool that way. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah. And uh, um, if you, um, one thing that really helped me a ton is, is, is between Tim Urban and in, in this, that, that I, I see Ryan put up there, the, um, the, the link to that, which is just pure fun to read, by the way, it's great stuff. The uh, McKinsey article? Yeah, uh, which one? I'm sorry? McKinsey article? Is- uh, did you put up the McKinsey, or you put up the, um, the uh, did you put that up to Tim, you put up Tim Urban? Uh, uh, the Wait But Why, is that Wait But Why? Wait But, wait, but oh, Why, okay. yeah. Yep. Yeah. McKinsey. Um, but he speaks about uh, or, or, or quotes uh, Seth Godin in there. Seth Godin's a fantastic blogger. If you don't know him yet, he, Seth Godin is very much first principle oriented marketing and leadership, especially yeah. marketing. Um, I read it every single morning. It's of the, all the blogs in the world. He's the one I read. It's, it's right. a few sentences to maybe a paragraph, a couple of paragraphs. Um, and so Seth Godin on, on, on 10, on you know, last week on the 20th, uh, and it, this, this is so first principles. And it's funny because he, uh, Tim Urban quotes him a few times, but um, he writes this, the test kitchen mindset. The first mindset is pretty common. Take good notes, make tiny changes, repeat, improve incrementally and move along the asymptote, test and measure. The other mindset is rare indeed. And I like that about this. Remember you're doing something that is rare and you know, we're, we're, that's, that's, you know, we're not perfect, but we are rare. And I love that. Okay, so keep that in mind. But do things that might not work, right? And that—that's what this is about. Develop new assertions. Go past the edges to unexplored territory. <laughs> Try to figure out why things are the way they are. Fail often. Blaze a trail. After all, it's a test kitchen, not a Michelin restaurant. And when the world changes, we see lots of people lining up to do the first sort of tests. A lot of crib sheets, looking over the competition, and trying to fit in all the way. But real innovation comes from the science of, quote, this might not work, you know, and then that, that is just, give me chills. I mean, that's, that's, that's what living, going out there and saying, how are you going to do something different? I mean, every, most people can do most things the same way, right? And you might be able to do those a little better. And that's great. It's certainly part of how we live our lives, but there has to be a part that I, you know, I'm a believer is put yourself out there in those ways that we still got to feed our families, still got to feed ourselves and, you know, whatever, uh, you know, go down those paths. But yeah, what makes life interesting right now with the amount of change going on, whether it's in business and innovation or whether it's at home and something you're trying to do, um, now there's so much ability and, and, and options and, and opportunity to change mm-hmm. in a way that, that you really want to. So this is a way to go out there and see what happens. And it, it's in, instead of saying like, well, I failed 700 times. Now I know 700 ways it don't work. Was that Edison? Yeah. That's true. I mean, I get that. And, but there's those little quotes that we kind of all know. But that's not what this is. It, it's partly that. But it, it's more about saying, um, wow, okay, I'm not just going to push forward and, and keep failing that way. I really want to know where I'm trying to get to. And then and, and, and put some words and structures and, and concepts around that that you can really use when you wake up in the morning and, 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 and constantly adjust that because in the system that you have, which is a part of this bigger idea of first principles, you can adjust all you want. And it doesn't throw off your incremental improvements because it's, it's, it's not the same thing. Okay. It will give you incremental improvements in a lot of different directions. You may find out 
that, I mean, you know, we'd be arrogant or you almost have hubris if we thought that, that we could contingency plan everything we needed to do right now so that in a year from now or two years from now, we'd get to where we're going because that's how everybody does it. The problem is, is we have no idea all the different things that are going to change. Hmm. So you, it, this allows you to keep changing and changing as you go along, making changes sooner than everyone else. And so, and so that, that what ends up happening is you can course correct, if you will, before everyone else does. Because they're going to wait until they have 80% of the data and make a decision. You can use this and make a decision at 60% of the data. I wouldn't suggest 50 because that's a coin toss. But okay. <laughs> so, but you can use 60%. And if it doesn't work a little bit, you can adjust. And the other people haven't even made a decision. Yet. And it's just phenomenal from that sort of a tool's perspective. Yeah. So, so, Kurt, I'm curious. We have a, a question in the chat from Jessica who asked, how do you apply first principles to strategy building? Yeah, and I'm going to I'm going to extend that and, and ask additionally, just like in a bit more of like practical terms, like I, I hear what you're saying on the or actually, you know what, I, Jessica, I see you unmuting. I, if, please take it away and, and elaborate on your own question. I don't mean to. Oh, no, no, it. feel free to add to it. I was just going to say, I'm curious on like the practical, like, like, what does this look like in practice when we talk about strategy? Yeah. Like, so you're applying this to building strategy. Like, how do you actually start to do first principles? You break it down to the components, but then how do you start to build it up? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, and so I'm going <laughs> to, because I, I think due to the fact that it's first principles, I, I have to pull out a little bit and go to first principles, which is to start with vision, right? So, I mean, I'm a believer you have vision, strategy, and motivational kind of leadership, if you will. And a vision without strategy is, is hallucination, right? I mean, it's just, you got to have the strategy. So if you have a vision and whatever that vision is that you want to get to, which, which is kind of a, again, a, a way of saying first principles, if, if, if you do it in a way that, that, that ties into this, but let's just, we'll get to that later if we need to. Off of that vision, then there, there's, there's the pieces that, that become the strategies to get you there. Okay. So instead of, um, um, I guess it goes down to, it, or it comes back to, is that vision a first principles idea? And then versus just a general idea, whatever it might, as good as it might be, then the strategies become very uh, structural pieces that you decide to do to then put in place to make sure you get that first principles ending, whatever that might be. I would, um, and it, it, so it is, I'm trying to bring that down that way. So when you, 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 you know, you, if that's, if that's a good start to it anyway, I think. Um, and then you have tactics underneath that. How are we gonna use tactics to move into your strategy that then go towards this, this, um, this vision? Um, so um, yeah, I, I, um, Jacob, help me bring that into kind of the, a little bit more of, cause you know, I, I tend to wanna go back into that, that higher level there and, and bring it back into strategy. Um, except I'll say one more thing on the strategies. By using first principles thinking, like what are the, if you tear everything else down and what are we trying to get to, but you, and you, you, then you can tear it down backwards. By doing that, you have so many more options of what your strategies could be. And I think that that is, if, if there's one thing I can say about your question, it's probably that, that you, you're not stuck with, with linear strategies that by definition normally have to incrementally step themselves through. And that's usually how, even in a startup, it's usually done. We all know we have to have a certain quality system or control documents, or we've got a certain marketing plan and, and all of that is set. And then it, then there's incremental improvements to get to that, those pieces through those strategies towards some sort of stated vision. Um, this allows the, the ability to, to be totally flexible in moving those strategies. So they're much more alive in terms of strategies. And so you, is, is it, in, in it, it embeds that DNA into the strategies themselves. And then underneath that would be your tactics. Okay, that, that then uh, the tactics are just gonna be what I call your toolbox, right? I mean, we all know the toolbox phraseology. I mean, I, I think that's great, but I like to say it's also a tackle box. So in a tackle box that we don't have specific tools that work. We know tools, we have lures, we're gonna go fishing in a certain area. We don't know what we're gonna catch. It's a totally different way of thinking of things. This allows you to take a tackle box into your strategy because you need to have that flexibility, not knowing what's going to work. You still don't know that you need to catch fish. You still need, know you got to bring that back to the to wherever and you know, feed the, the masses, whatever you're going to do. But it's a it's that sort of different look at how these things work. Yeah. So it, does does that kind of 
bring in a little flavor of the first principles then? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So it's, um, uh, guys, I'm going to let my dog out because I'm more, yeah, <laughs> he's just <laughs> driving me crazy. All good. <laughs> um, in the meantime, while, while Kurt's letting his dog out, I'm curious, uh, what's coming up for people? So is this making sense? Is there, is this, uh, you know, creating just more questions? Um, I'm curious if anybody else has, has thoughts and then, um, I, yeah, go for it. Um, so curiosity is like, Kurt, you said something about working backwards. So it's almost like, you know, you start with, you, like you say, you start with the vision, which is the end point. And then you, and you work your way backwards, but is there like a specific, um, you know, is there a specific tactic that you would do to work backwards to get to the basics? Um, like, yeah. like, do you say, okay, well, before a vision, you have to have these specific components to get there, or you know, is there something specified that that we can get to that help us work backwards down to that nitty gritty? Yeah, uh, it's a great question. I'm thinking, and in, in, in that sense, so the tactics or tactic, yeah, tactics would be this is what we're trying to accomplish, whatever that phrase you want to use to really in, in, in embrace the concept of first principles. But then the tactics are going to say, okay, let's look at, let's use Jessica's point of strategies. So the tactics are going to say, okay, now we have, um, uh, let's look at different types of strategies that all get us there, all right? So now we're, let, let's take a, a wider view using tactical thinking of how many strategies do we think will work? And then we, we throw those out there and then we bring those together and say, here's the group, here's, here's the three strategies in this one area, marketing or whatever, that, that should work, that might work. And then it, so it opens up this idea through the tactical use of this, of how you apply strategies and how you put those in place, all right? And then to bring those down, so now we have what looks like a, a, a lot more um, um, possibilities, like it's, it's almost too many or something, and it's not actually the case because we know they all plug into this final answer, if you will, of whatever that might look like exactly, because we, it, it needs to be alive. But this is for me about being, making a system that's a lot more alive and can adjust and change, right? So then we bring that back down into the day-to-day -day tactics to say, okay, who wants to do this? And, and it gives us an opportunity to adjust quickly. What new data do we have? How did that move into um, uh, one of our other scenarios, right? That, that maybe we thought of because we, one was time, one was money, one was uh, market moving, uh, competitive analysis, um, whatever it might be, technology, innovation. Um, as those change, then we can start to, to plug into those already because we've already planned for those. And in, in at least, um, well, very specifically, but also um, in conceptually, we've, a, we, we planned for those. So the tactics on a day-to-day -day basis are, okay, here's what we're going to do. And that even goes down to, let's say in, in, in Jessica's case, it, it depends on your team. So let's say you have three different tactics that go in, or uh, uh, tactics that go into three different strategies that, that move on to where you're trying to go. But what if some of the people in your team are better at a set of tactics that work better in one strategy? So now it, it, it allows us to have more flexibility about who we hire, who we work with, how we, how we collaborate. Um, do we need partnerships uh, from outside the community, outside of our, our, our business? Um, so it, 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 it's that bringing tactics, applying it that way to bring it back to today. And there's always that little bridge I mean, it's important to remember there's a little bridge because if it, without that, everybody thinks, well, if that this were that easy, everybody do it. It's, it is easy. It's a totally different way of thinking of things, right? It really is. And it seems, it seems simple. It seems like we're just using words in a different way. It's a really big concept. And in, once you get it, it's exciting and you can do so many different things with it. But at the end of the day, there's still where we are and there's the rest of the way to go, whatever that we, we, we make that to be. That little bridge is always hard work. It's, it's hard to figure out what to do right this second to get us to each one of these pieces. Yeah. Is there a, oh, oh I'm sorry. What, what were you gonna say, David? That's okay, go for it. Is there like a, have you recently used first principles or can you like explain the last time you used first principles in practice um, with your yeah. work? because well, I, because I probably use it all the time. I'm trying to think which, which one would be best. <laughs> um, 
this is probably a good time to talk about a cautionary tale from before I say that. Um, the first principle isn't always a good idea. And so I will give you an example of that. If you have something that, you know, people are moved by narrative and story more than they are by logic, right? More than they're, they're more than moved by trust, ethos, pathos, logos. They're moved by story. It's always been the case and it goes back forever. That's how, that's how we, we share with each other, how we tell people what they should be scared of or not scared of. And so um, if, um, gosh, I'm, 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 I kind of threw off on, on, the, on the story there. So let me start with also, um, um, when I was a, when I was, gosh, 15 or something, and I'm not 15, I'm not even close to that anymore, but we used to have at our, at our church, we'd have a uh, German church, we'd have sauerkraut meals, you know, for on this one time of the year. And, and so the, the brats and the whatever, um, and the church was getting so many people wanting to come. But the thing was, is to make the sauerkraut the way we made it, it was Zoll's style, kind of like kimchi or whatever, we'd bury it in the backyard and with heat. And, and that's how you made sauerkraut, old style, right? And you may know that if you don't, that's how it was made in, in the old country, as they say. Well, the church wanted to get more people through. So their thinking was, in kind of a, what are we trying to accomplish, sort of first principles way, we need to get more people through that want to come so if we can get more people through faster. We can't, you know, we'll just get uh, sauerkraut from somebody who makes really good sauerkraut. You know, it's not the old style, but it'll, it'll be fine. Well, it worked. We got a lot more people through the church and raised raise more money and whatever. But you can imagine what happened is that eventually it wasn't so special, right? And we, we broke a cultural tradition. And that's my cautionary tale is there's pieces of the way that we, we have a narrative with each other, these stories with each other, that sometimes you don't want to break systems. First principles are amazingly powerful at breaking systems. And most of the time, um, if you, you, you're either wanting to break a system or create a brand new one, if you're creating a brand new system, you're not breaking anything. That's great. That's, yeah, that's very straightforward. But in some of these companies, like I was reading about, we have to start, if a company wants to do something new, they normally have to start a whole new group with maybe 20% of them from the old company, because it's, it's, you need to break the old system. But if you're in something that's really important, maybe it doesn't work great, or maybe there, there's, there's, there's that story that you want to hold to in a community, whatever type of community you have, you don't always want to break that. And first principles will break that. And so it, it's, it's something to be careful with in that sense, right? And so I, I, I think when, if for my own narrative, when I'm trying to get in shape or if when I'm trying to, 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 to look at a systems in a different way, that's very contained because I know it's my system and I'm not breaking my own cultural way of looking at that. But this relationship we all have in, the, in a collider, there's some things you could do that would break that system. And so you have to be careful how you use it. Right? And, and so that is, um, it, it really is that powerful because it's, it's like a, it's a computer program, if you will. It's, not, it's, it's so predictable what, you, what will happen if you do it that, I, it, again, it, it'll take you places you may not have known you were going to go, which is really cool sometimes. But yeah, just a little cautionary tale on that front. So, and then I don't remember your question now. <laughs> but what was... Just your specific example of... Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, but apologies. Well, I mean, one that I'm working, I just, it, for me and you guys for, for about two, three years ago, meeting Jacob is that... Um, the uh, I got I was introduced to, to the altrometric side, um, really more so about three four weeks ago, and in a platform for ESG that I'm looking at. And the reason I'm I'm working, I really want to work with altrometric. So it's it's not really a plug for altrometric. It's just that they your team looks at it from from instead of a full system, are little bites at a time, building little pieces together. Well, with this ESG platform, which brings a lot of small suppliers together. In, in, in a way that's, 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 that's very different, bringing, and I won't get into all the specifics of it, but looking at what am I trying to accomplish? What's this first principles thing that, that doesn't exist yet? And now there's something, if it doesn't exist yet, I'm not breaking anything, but I need someone who can put little pieces together that build into what I need ultimately for it to look like. And that has to go hand in hand. 
Because if I just went to somebody and said, well, where, like with Altimetric, I want to, I'm starting here and I want to kind of grow. Was, well, where do you want to go? Well, I really need to know what system I'm breaking for me for that conversation to make sense, right? And, and then to combine with people that really know how to take, put those different strategies together that can hear what I'm trying to say. I and mean, that's just very important. You know, if you're trying to tell, explain to somebody, what are we trying to accomplish? What are first principles? You need somebody on the other side of the table that's willing at least to understand what it is, how it is you're thinking. What's the concept you're using? Because if without that, they're going to apply like you would expect everything that they've done before, how they've done it before, where were their successes before. And, and the thing is, is if it's new or you're trying to innovate, that's probably uh, not maybe not the worst thing you can do, but it's close, right? So, um, so for me, that right now, that that's where I've done it. Um, and so, it's there are times when I don't want to use it because I, the, the 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 normal way of incrementally improving. And I just use this idea of, well, if what we're trying to accomplish isn't that big. <laughs> You know, and there's only so much each one of us can do and so much our systems can do. So you have to kind of scale that and, and, and try to use our, our narrative a little bit. What's really important for me, for this team, because some, sometimes we, we don't want to go down that path. The incremental steps we're taking are getting us there and well enough, right? So you don't need to, you don't need to use it for every single thing. Um, it can get a little bit daunting. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, it, it, it's kind of this idea as you get to play with it more, when you use it, when don't you? So I saw Jacob said we got caught up, we, we met in a line at a music festival, which is really cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just to add some uh, color to, to that story. Um, very cool. So while I'm waiting for, if anybody else uh, has any questions, I have a quick one to sneak in, uh, but Please, everybody, uh, whatever is top of mind, if you have any questions for Kurt, or again, if you want to share something specific to how you might apply this uh, in your work and get direct feedback from Kurt, uh, we, we'd love to hear from everyone in this room. So please uh, feel free to, to tune in. Um, in the meantime, Kurt, I'm curious like how, how goal setting factors in. Um, so obviously, if you're creating something brand new, oftentimes goal setting will be benchmarked incrementally, right? So it's like, you know, we're going to increase users by 30% this month or something like that. So I'm curious, just like, does the first principles only apply to the visioning and then you treat, then it's like incremental improvements from there, if that makes sense, or is it like fake yeah. throughout the process? I'm curious. Well, I think that's, you know, you, you hit on something we say, okay, we want to improve viewership or whatever, let's say by or users by 30%, right? And in the next month, I mean, some sort of measurable thing. I think when, if, if we were to have a discussion uh, um, in, in a different way without first principles, I think most people would normally say that's a good goal, right? And here's our goals and here's how we're going to do that. And our minds naturally then pull back to what are my incremental steps to hit that goal? So I told, it, it, and that makes sense. But it, the, 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 and so there, there's a piece of this that goes into first principles, but where the first principles would apply is saying, okay, well, where I would say, well, where did you get that goal, right? I mean, how does that goal, where is that supposed to go? So it's, it's more of where are we trying to get to ultimately, right? What's our ultimate idea of what we're trying to do? Is a 30% more viewers in the next 30 days or, or users in the next 30 days, how does that fit in at all? Does it fit in at all? Is it supposed to be 30% 30 30 more users in the next five days, five hours, um, five months might be better. It's, it's an interesting way that, that turns those ideas on their heads because it's, it's it, well, I wanna know where you got that. <laughs> it's like, where, where are we trying to get to? And I think what, what you'll find is in those situations we're shared goals like that from people in the corporation or in our business, whatever it is. And so our, our, we end up just incrementally trying to push to that, right? So I, I think, um, yeah, I'm more interested in where does that come from, right? And, and so you can say, well, what is that bigger picture? And then and draw that back down. And I think that's a question that's, you can ask that question to people around you and say, well, I wanna know exactly what we're trying to accomplish. Cause that can't be what accomplished that. And then what, what is, what's the, it's a goal. And yeah, ultimately you have those goals incrementally set in, but what you'll find with first principles when you have those goals is you have, you have 
the ability to change those goals. So the way you said that goal, for example, is very specific, very set in stone, very concrete in time, in percentage, and what you're trying to do, right? It, it, and not that that isn't something you could use, but there needs to be, like if you look at the, the, the cook and the chef, you'll see that something changed. So now I got to change what I'm trying to get to. There, well, your inputs change, so you got to change your outputs. So it needs, to, it, it needs to have that feel to it. You know, so, if, so if everyone knows that we're presuming this is where we're going, everyone agrees it's first principles idea, and everyone understands that this particular piece of the goal is one of the ways to get there, then that's cool, right? Then stand on it in, in that sense, it makes sense, right? It, it, it would. Um, but the problem is most people don't look at it that way. They hear that goal and they think that that's, that's like this concrete goal, right? That, that is somehow handed down from above. When I go back to that, that article or that blog again, you kind of realize one day that, you know, it's like, well, I really don't know anything. And then next, this, the, the, the next epiphany is, well, you don't know what else knows anything either. <laughs> it's, you know, and it's, you know, we defer to people that have titles or that have been around a long time or whatever it is. We defer to them because it must make sense. You know, somebody's a doctor in front of their name or so um, same sort of thing, right? It first principles allows us to break out of that and, and realize that, you know, I, I we all don't know anything in a sense, right? I mean, we do, yeah. it's just fun that way. I have a really relevant example that you just made me think of. Uh, so some folks in the room might know about this, but as we approach Halloween, uh, curious, everybody envision how you cut a pumpkin. Um, so everyone cuts it from the top and then you scoop out the seeds and you make a jack lantern, right? Uh, believe it or not, if you cut from the bottom, you can actually just pull out all the goop right away without having to scoop it out. And then you have the handle to hold the jack lantern. <laughs> So it's just an objectively cutting it from the bottom is just an objectively better way to do it. Yeah. But everybody does it wrong. <laughs> so want to just, with the jack o' lantern on your head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. But but it, it's one of those things where it's like if you uh, assume that just because it's the way that it's done, just because it's the way that it's done, does not mean that it's the best way to do it. Yeah. Um, and if I'm hearing you correctly, Kurt, I think that that is first principles thinking right there. Is, is it not? It is exactly it. I mean, it's the, we defer to these ideas of how it's always been done. It's reasoning by analogy. If it's always been done that way and it works to whatever degree it works, we just do it more, right? The same thing happens, by the way, with bananas. We all take the top of the banana and peel it. It's not how monkeys actually peel a banana. They grab the top and they peel it from the other side because it's actually easier. But it's it's not how we do it. But I love yours. Yours is better. I'm going to tell my kids that. Um, it is being able to say, what are we trying to accomplish? And then kind of, even in those little things, right? I mean, it just doesn't need to be changing the world stuff, but it's really thinking of things from a different angle. And it allows you another, it gives you a really cool tool to, to, to be able to look at things from a different angle because it's, it, it, we're just stuck with the tools we have. There's this toolbox and, and you know, so if all you have is a hammer, everything's, everything's problems are nails sort of, sort of a way. Um, mm. This is another really cool tool. I put it more in that tackle box side because you have no idea what you're going to catch sometimes. But it's it's really neat because you know that you can y'all say, oh wow, I've never had that happen before. It opens up new ways. We get out of our own way, right? We stop just con we stop confining ourselves how we've always looked at things, and it, it really it, it without having to put the effort, the willpower in it to try to get out of our, get out of our own way. Go back to Greg's question earlier. I mean, it's, it, it's it's a lot of work if we're always trying to have the willpower to change, to to not drink too much coffee, to do whatever it might be. But this allows us to to actually get out of our own way and look at things in a different way that 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 don't take as much willpower, and it's a lot more fun. You have no idea what's going to happen sometimes. <laughs> so so I, I like that part about it. It's it's which if you think about it, ties into innovation. It ties into the pace of the world right now. It, it, it which is gonna keep, it, it, the pace is what it is and it's gonna keep going, right? Um, this way of, an, of, of being in the world really marries up, it's congruent with how the world works right now. You know, reasoning by analogy is not, it, it works and there's enough of the world left that's still reasoning by analogy. It's obviously what a lot of people in business do but you're not going to be anything, you know, you're not going to create something new. You're not going to set yourself apart or differentiate your company if you don't, in, in, you don't put this in. I mean, you look at the, um, 
um, to, to put this DNA into a startup company so that it's always there is one of the key things I would tell a startup company, always. And then we would talk about what's that look like and, and where is that DNA implemented and, and so that you can change, you can move, whether it's from the funding side, the, uh, uh, you just don't know where that's going to go. So uh, you need to have that in your DNA. And, and most startups you'd think have this in their DNA and they would, I think a lot of them would argue they do, but most of them don't. It's a new idea. It's, I mean, I get that part, right? But the, the, the ability to change uh, and, and go with the new inputs and change is, is VC, you know, you try to explain that to a VC. They're going to hate that, right? It's your, well, this is where they want you to go there, hit these numbers in these time frames, and scale up exactly how you said, which is like the opposite of first principles, right? And so, mm. um, but that's how a lot of it's done. So it's, you can do both. You can, you can incorporate it into the startups and because that's the world I come from. But you can, when you look at a large company, whoever's from a large company, you're going to keep hearing that you really need to start, like it needs to be a special team that most of them didn't come from the core company because it, it is a different way of thinking that you, you, need to, you, you need to let go of your baggage or not have it, really. You just not have it. <laughs> so. Got you. So we have another question in the chat here from Gladys. Um, just wondering if you can if you could suggest some resources to, for for continued learning. Um, the way you're explaining it sounds very simple, but now we're all going to go back to our individual projects and, and uh, yeah. run into obstacles. You know, how how can we uh, how can we uh, what do you recommend in terms of actually applying this thinking? Well, you know, I've shared it with 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 you, Jacob and Ryan. Is the the cook and the chef is by far the best. You know. Uh, explanation. I mean, it's it's fifty some. Well, it's it's a little bit longer blog. I wouldn't really call it a blog, I suppose. But um, it's one piece of what Tim Urban did, um, and is is trying to explain Elon Musk. But it's I've not found anything else that explains it well by stepping through piece by piece how it's built. And he's funny when he does it. He, he has a little bit of profanity in there too. But, I mean, in the way he does it. But um, it, it's if you want really a, a step through of how it works in a very entertaining way that you can actually take pieces out of and like stick to your your wall, then that that to me is 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 probably the best one. I think the the day to day learning of it too is the Seth Godin blog. If you if you don't know of him yet, um, it's he incorporates first principles, although he doesn't use the phrase first principles, but like what I read earlier, it's first principles. That's what he's about. And so it's just an idea of how to look at things every single day. And so he gives that ability. So I think between the two of them, this is kind of a fun way that Elon does it. And then the other one is here's Seth Godin every day, um, giving you some ideas of, of what it looks like on, on today, today, what are you going to do today? That really helps you keep moving along that path. So I think it's, you know, it's both of those are um, active pieces of getting you involved and in just doing it. Right. So we can talk about it. You could read a little book on it or something, which honestly, I'm, I was a teacher earlier on to me, that would be boring to me. That's something you wouldn't do. And it's, it's, it's a very, it's, reading a little book on first principles in this way, what we're talking about is again, almost kind of the opposite of first principles. It's so much more alive than that. So how do you capture that? It has to be, to me, captured in a way that I can wake up each day and, and, and be able to say, well, how am I gonna use this today? Give me a new set of words that I can try, apply to my day that's that not, not, you almost meditate on and say, this is what I'm doing. And how does that apply? To the cook and the chef, which is here's how Elon does it, and it's constant new data. Put stuff, you know, put, give me a new outcome. What am I trying to do? And it's it, and it's the best way to do that. I think those is I've shared those before with other people. I stand by it. I think those are the best ways to really understand how this works. Um, and you're always welcome to reach out to me. I just enjoy um, having conversations with people that to get your mind around this at first. For me, it was hard. It was really, it was, it was difficult because it's the words sound similar to all of the other words we use for strategy, vision. They did sound similar, but they're not. 
So you end up with this weird thing going on in your brain. <laughs> so it can take a little bit to get used to it, right? And to, to yeah. really embrace it. So, so Gregory dropped a great question here, which is, you said, have you ever been in a situation where in order to use this first principles thinking, you didn't have the right area of background knowledge or expertise? What did you do in that situation? Um, and this, this uh, what comes to mind for me is an interview I once heard Elon Musk in an interview say, she's, she's like, but you don't have a rocket background. Like, how did you learn rocket engineering? And he, he thinks for a second and he goes, I read a lot of books. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I always thought that was really funny, but yeah, curious uh, to hear your take, Kurt. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, I know he didn't have rocket propulsion. He didn't even know it. He took the specialists, whoever was his expert at SpaceX. He, he, he says, "How do I need? I need to know rocket propulsion." So he gave him the book, and he went home and he read it like in a week. And then he knew more about rocket propulsion than the expert. And of course, that's Elon. I mean, he, he's odd that way. Um, but um, so what I, I mean, there's. <laughs> I'll use this. Sometimes, um, use this for good, not evil, by the way. So I would say it's sometimes you you can use this to fake it until you make it. And because when you talk about an area of expertise, right, and you think about the area of expertise, everybody's has their this thing that you're talking about that 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 maybe you don't know as much as they do. But what they all bring to that is some sort of reasoning by analogy that got them to their expertise. They're all stuck in there. This is what I know. This is where I came from. And therefore, ergo, this is what I should do next. Right? So great. If you're using reason, uh, first principles, it's a great way. It's a perfect moment to step in and say, hey, guys, I've learned this new thing. I really want to look at this. And you can even be open with them and say, I don't know that as well as you do. Or you don't have to tell them that's the good and evil part. But you can say, look, I, I, I I think we should do this and then get other people involved in the conversation saying, well, what does that look like? It's actually a really great leadership tool that way then, because you can step back and let all these other people who know all of this, this, this knowledge of the, of the, the base knowledge, bring all of that to the table. They're feeling empowered and as they should be, and they're feeling like they're, they're really valuable because they are, but what you're doing them is giving them a key that allows them to unlock it and use it in a new way. And that's how what every when I use it, that's in, in situations where I don't know a lot, it, it it rises above topics, right? It just does. It rises above knowledge, um, if you want it to, right? And so um, that's how I do it. And you know, granted, usually in those situations, I'm in a situation where I know the people, I know the industry, and so it's not like we're that far out from you know. I'm not at a rocket company I didn't expect it to be at. So, oh, one of my absolute favorite tools reminds me of first principles is the five whys. <laughs> uh, yes, I remember the five whys. Or, um, yeah, there's a thing, a thing called an auto, and that's right. I think it, it's a great way to look at it. I think there's another thing in automotive called um, um, the root cause analysis. They call them 8D corrective actions. And um, all of it, it, it's kind of, they use the five whys. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So how do you bring all of that back um, to understand what's the base um, problem, right? And so it is, it's a, it's a, it's a, I'll, I'll say it's probably another, it's a great way to put another baby version of first principles. And, and, and I don't mean that in a negative way. It's, 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 um, it's, that's what it is. You're saying, okay, how do, how do we constantly break down things to their, to their most basic piece? So that's one piece of it. No question. Yeah. I think the other piece of it is of course, um, now you understand what's going on in that moment. And that's how that would be used, the five Y or an eight D corrective action or whatever. And then, but if, if you're then turning into a more global perspective of what you're trying to accomplish, what thing are you trying to solve or whatever it might be, then it kind of goes a little bigger, right? So it gets, it, it can be used in all of those ways. But I love the idea of taking the five Ys and using that as a, a way for people to get their mind around this. So yeah, that, that, that makes sense to me. And Raj, fantastic. So we're, we're coming up to 6 30, uh, yeah. everybody. So please, uh, if you have any other thoughts, let's, uh, let's hear them. Well, we've got Kurt on the line here. Um, and if you want to, I don't know if they have access to my email or whatever, if you want to put that up, um, I, I love to, to just talk and help if anybody needs that. It's not a, 
play to, to do anything like consulting. Right? I, just, yeah. I love this stuff. Love, love, love it. And um, it's just a joy to talk about. Rye, will you drop a Kurt's email in the chat, please? Thank you. Um, cool. While we're thinking here, and uh, Kurt's email is here in the chat. So I just want to say thank you, uh, Kurt. This was fantastic. Um, I think uh, you've given me certainly a lot of things to kind of uh, debrief and, and think about uh, with, with Collider, with, with all the things that I'm working on. Um, I really want to kind of apply this thinking and, and see how uh where it can drive some some real innovation i'm, I'm pumped to, to give this a try in the real world um it just so, seems yeah. a little bit difficult because there's nothing new under the sun right so like you're trying to think about things that haven't been thought about before yeah. but what hasn't been thought about before i, I mean hey well i think that's you know and that's that's a great question i mean because it's it's kind of like well if, if it's a if it's a great idea and it's possible, then it's already been done, right? But what this allows you to do, I mean, that's, that's the idea. So people think, well, I won't do anything because somebody's already done that or they try it. Or more specifically, they go after that specific way of doing things because, well, I'm gonna do the same things that's already worked before. It, it just kind of a sucks people into the same way of doing whatever it is their else has always done in terms of new ideas. This pulls you out of that and allows all ideas that, 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 so it's instead of saying my first principle is what I'm trying to do is a new idea. It's like, okay, this is what I'm trying to accomplish, which allows for all new, all ideas to, to collect and connect in different ways. Right. So um, now I have a new idea on the ESG platform, but it's really based on I don't know exactly all the pieces, how they're going to come together. So all the ideas underneath that have to, you know, if I knew that it's been done like this before, it wouldn't work. And if I knew that I had, couldn't allow all those pieces to move until they worked in the right way, this won't work. So it, it's really opening up like a, like a, like a, a little blue pool in front of my house where my dog swims in, you know, and it's just like, okay, what's going to evolve in there after my dog gets out of it. Um, but, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. And you just knowing that you want to have um, some, whatever it is that, that, that you're looking at from a bigger perspective. Um, so it's, it's a little theoretical, I know, sounding in that way. But when we think, well, I, it's a, when, when we narrow it down to a new idea, then it's, it's kind of the opposite of first principles, if you will. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a way of opening up paths for a new idea to evolve in a new way. Because it's, you're right, if, if all we have is a new idea and then we're gonna use all the ways we know it worked before for everyone else, all we're gonna do is apply the same rules. All we're gonna do is try the same stuff. And you're right, you're right, it's gonna be the same idea with a different flavor. It's all it's going to be, and it may or it probably won't work, and it'll be a race to the bottom because of the pricing or whatever. Right? It's just going to be a. It could be a mess, um, but that won't allow for innovation, whether in your personal life or whether in a professional life. So, but it's a great question. I mean, it's a, it's, it's exactly why it, why it's so important, and why I just believe in it so much because it frees up your thinking to say. Yeah, I mean, this is, I don't know how it's going to get there, but there's a lot of things that are possible that, that, that I can't think through all the steps from here to there. But if I allow all those steps to occur, instead of making them happen, if you will, in a sense, then it really also, does open up possibilities. There's that famous uh, quote from the, the head of the patent office in like 1905 or something, where he said, everything that can be invented has been invented. Yeah. Um, so you don't want to be that guy, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> there, there's presumably lots of things that haven't been invented that we just, uh, you, you can't even wrap your head around yet because yeah. we need that first principle thinking. Uh, well, anyhow, uh, we're over the hour, so we want to be respectful of everyone's time and let you get back to your evenings. Um, I dropped a link here for Collider Slack, um, and I want to make a, a shameless plug. So Kurt is in the Slack, Brian and I are in the Slack. Um, join us on the Slack channel, and then we can continue the conversation there uh, with Kurt um, anytime, uh, asynchronously. So definitely encourage everyone to join. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We host conversations like this all the time. Uh, so please do plug in um, to what we're doing, because um, we'd love to hear from you all. 
And with that, uh, we want to uh, say one final thank you to Kurt, and we shall see everyone soon. Thank you. Definitely. Thanks for having me, everybody. Appreciate it.